What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live stream. I got Mr. Reefing with O on, hiding in the background. How you doing today, O? If you're still there. I am good. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Um, so today, actually, first question, how many tanks do you have up and running? Uh, three at the moment, and I'm working on a fourth. <laughs> nice. Um, it's kind of funny to see how many people actually have, like, multiple tanks on the go in this hobby. And it seems to be kind of part of the addiction. You know, you got another tank, you can add more stuff, or you want to keep some other different types of corals or some other different type of biotope, that type of thing. So it, it's easy to get sucked into having many, many tanks, which is kind of crazy. Like I know Matt in the comments was saying, uh, a few years ago I had five saltwater tanks, one brackfish and like five freshwater tanks all going at the same time. And result of that is that a bunch of midi core looking tanks. So that's actually a good point. So I guess the question is, you know, do you do one tank and make it awesome? Do you have a bunch of really cool tanks? I don't know. So, you, okay, so you have three. You're going for four, right? Yes, I am. All right. So what's your motivation for setting up the fourth tank? I think I want a species. You know what? I think the more tanks you have, the easier they become to manage. Yeah. Um. So I think with this new tank, I want to do – so I see you with your rock flower tank. I see Greg Carroll with his Akans doing awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think I want a specific tank to see if I can do, you know, some Akans and feed them and really mm -hmm. get nice, juicy and plump. And it's going to be right beside my desk where I work. Nice. So, um, and then because it's a few feet away from the big tank, I think water changes, like just doing like, you know, scooping water in between the two tanks should be easy. Um, mm hmm so it's more about being species specific, a coral that I struggle with, trying to give it an environment where I can give it extra attention. Yeah, makes sense. Now, are your tanks hooked up together? Are they connected or are they all separate tanks? I have two, the Anemone tank and the Red Sea Reefer 350 are connected. Mm -hmm. The my the Nano tank is in my son's bedroom. That is 12 gallons separate. And the... A can slash Zoa tank. I haven't quite decided yet. Mm -hmm. That is going to be separate. Okay, nice. Uh, okay, one production saying I have five frag tanks and a 20 gallon Red Sea Max 55 and two 40 gallon breeders. So it's a good chunk. Um, I do think that plumbing, if possible, plumbing or connecting them together makes a huge difference. So, you know, if you have one sump, so you could have multiple tanks running off one sump or you could pipe your sumps together, but having basically. One of the key things is reducing the amount of maintenance that you have to do to maintain all these systems. I know back before my saltwater days when I was into freshwater, I was breeding all the little fancy shrimp and I had like seven tanks probably going with those guys, I had them all over the place. So tons, but none of them are connected. So, you know, they said they're all driven off of like an air pump and or like a little hang on the back filter, but it was a lot of work, you know, water changing seven tanks. So I think if you can possibly plumb them together, it makes a huge, huge difference. You had seven tanks going at one point? I think so. Oh, that, that's when I was breeding all the little fancy hardcore crystal shrimps and all those type of guys way back Shoot. when. That's a lot of tanks. Oh, I know. You're getting closer though, man. There's four coming. You're halfway there. More than halfway. Yeah, you know what? If I had the space, I mm -hmm. think we would... Like, I tried with a tank. My apartment is already warm. So we tried, I think four we had at one time, mm -hmm. but I think we've experimented with tanks everywhere. I think yeah. we tried in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Didn't actually work out because the temperature. But when I need to quarantine, I do have like a 10 gallon tank. I spin up in the kitchen. So that's my quarantine or tank transfer method. Mm -hmm. that's, just, that's kept in the kitchen and is not, you know, that's not kept running all the time. But the humidity, the heat, it was... It fluctuated too much to keep a tank in the kitchen. I tried in my bedroom, um, but my wife with her hair products, that got weird algae. So I think I've tried. I think the bathroom I haven't attempted, but I think I've attempted in every room. <laughs> nice. Bathroom <laughs> would be kind of cool. Okay, so the I, one question is, now do you find it more work and effort to maintain all these different little systems? Or are you like, yeah, it's just part of it? I find them... It, you know what? It depends on the tank. So my son's tank in his bedroom, I find it difficult to maintain only because it's an acrylic and it's circle. Mm, okay. uh, and I am really sort of learning that if something is a pain to do, then you're going to put it off. Mm -hmm. So I think that tank, 
you can't use a regular algae scraper. You need to put your hand in it to clean it. And I'm finding that I put the maintenance off because it's you don't want to stick your hand in the tank every time you want to clean the glass. And then by the time you're ready to clean it, it has coralline algae and it requires like a a lot of effort, like a dedicated hour or so to actually clean the core. And now the tank is scratched. So I'm mm-hmm. actually in the process of swapping that out for a 20 gallon Nuvo. Glass tank? Yes, glass. Would you ever glass. do would you ever do yeah, acrylic I, again? I don't think so. Yeah. That's um my big thing too. I've always been kind of I'm afraid of scratches. <laughs> Terrified. That's the one thing I don't find to do ever do acrylic. But. Yeah, I, I can't I know you can buff it, but I just I'm too I mean I scratch my Red Sea Reefer doing yeah. silly things. I can't imagine if I had acrylic. Yeah. You know, the kind of little I know you can buff it, but I don't I don't think I would ever do acrylic. Okay, that's fair. Um, I don't. I don't think I would either, just because it would be hard to. I mean, it is. You can clean it, right? But it is definitely effort. Um, I feel like it's past yours. Um, okay. Now, would you rather have one giant system or a bunch of smaller systems for different things, or just one really big tank? You could put lots of stuff in. I, you know, two years ago, I would have said no, but I think I. I think I would like always like to have one big tank, but I think nano tanks are so. I think for a while they've always been alluring to me, but I think for a while, you know, we sort of had this myth that we we I think we all heard that the bigger you go, the easier it will be, the more stable it is. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm realizing that nanos are fun because if that tank has something wrong with it, I fill up a bucket and I can do a within a year I can do a hundred percent water change. Mm-hmm. And you're reset and you're back to zero. That's true. First of all, big tank. I can't do that. That's, you know, requires like multiple brew trash cans and it's a big effort. Mm-hmm. When, um, actually on my Monday video, I was kind of laughing because I always say like, I don't know, take it so easy to water change. I actually timed it. I put a timer on the screen. It didn't edit anything. I was like, it was like less than two minutes. Like, boom, five gallon water change is done. Yes. So that, that is definitely something big to be said about doing a nano. Um, if anyone's at Reef Palooza or actually the BRS channel, they Ryan did a talk about the kind of five or ten year tank, and one of the points that he made was planning, you know, not necessarily this a big magic tank that you want, but more a tank that fits your lifestyle, and that kind of plays into what we were talking about earlier. Hey, to me, we dropped off. Um, so if we have, if you're maintaining a tank and it's like a massive saltwater tank. You know, and if you're slacking on water changes because you're like, oh, it's expensive to do it. You know, sometimes there's something to be said about doing a bit of a smaller system that, you know, you can afford to maintain. It's easy to maintain. You're actually going to do it. So about not slacking on the maintenance is going to make you um, be happy with your tank long term. Right. Because if you make it easy for yourself, that's one of the huge, huge things about this. Welcome back. All right. Thank you. I think. Oh, you're. Oh, (laughs) I was looking at you on YouTube. Double. (laughs) <laughs> told um, you it happened <laughs> i i learned that you know you have all these things where you're like hey that's not a lot of effort that's only going to take a minute it's quick and easy to do mm-hmm. and then you sort of learn that oh no these five minutes these 10 minutes really add up yep exactly so having a tank that fits your lifestyle is i thought that was an excellent point you know it is true you know, and that same going goes with having, you know, one tank or six tanks, you know, it's what fits your lifestyle. What can you handle? What can you maintain? You know, what can you afford to do to an extent? Like, is you know, there's something to be said about having, you know, one tank with, you know, good equipment versus a bunch of tanks with cheap equipment that you got to maintain and fix all the time. Right. So a few different kind of aspects to it. Yeah, I love nano tanks are awesome. I, I love nanos. They're fun. I, 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 I've, yeah. Got two I see right there. Rock... Is that me? Two of me? No, no, oh. no. In your background. You got a nano tank by your big tank. That's oh, nice. yeah. That is my... Uh... Oh, sorry. I can't. Wait. Yeah, right. that is <laughs> That is my... That Yeah, that's my anemone tank. Love nice. it. Love it. Hey, one, I don't know if you're going to get to it, if, it's, if I'm just, you know, speaking out of turn here. But one thing that I love now with nanos is you can bank corals. Mm. So in the event of a crash... And as someone who just went through a crash, mm-hmm. I was able to save a few choice pieces by just having frags of them in the nano. 
So you have, so you know when this crashed, the tech that was connected to it also crashed. But I had pieces that I had banged in the other nano that are that were safe that I'm now reseeding this tank. So there's something to say from having you know maybe some prized pieces. I would have lost all my jawbreakers if they were here, but mm-hmm. thankfully they were in my nano, so I kept my jawbreaker. So I'm really happy about that. Nice. Um, that that is one of the prime good. I didn't even consider that, but that is one of the huge things of having two tanks. Like a lot of time, if I get you know some new zoas or a new coral, I'll just break off a little branch, throw it in the nano, and put the rest of my big tank. That way, if something does happen, you do have that backup, which is huge, huge point. Good one to bring up. I think my son is watching, so I don't want to say I use his as a I use the, <laughs> the tank that's in his room as sort of a quarantine. But if there's something that I don't trust or I might put it in his tank first. Yeah. <laughs> Just to, you know, like it's easier to treat something in a 12 gallon tank than to treat it in a, you so, know. So what you're seven. saying is he's your backup tank. So he's helping you out. So yeah. a very good son you have. He, he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> I don't know if he's watching. Yeah. Uh, awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, Davis. Davis, Monica, Mike, what is going on, guys? Tons of people starting to pour into the chat. Welcome. Um, speaking of rogue aquariums, you, sir, have a massive tank. You got to get that baby going. I'm excited for it. Uh, bye all. See you later, K-Reef. Okay, so nano tank. A couple of people asking, how's the new tank doing? You got corals in it yet? I can see fish swimming around in the background. There are corals in the tank. Um, I went to Reef. Oh, I saw you a couple of weeks ago at yeah, Reef. You did. Was yeah. That, was that last so, a week ago? I saw you. It yeah. was a week. We hung out like eight, nine days ago. Uh, it, wow, time flies, huh? No, no, it's true. Uh, so uh, yes, I have corals in the tank. I think I went home from Reef of Palooza with like two Brightwell Aquatics five gallon buckets full of corals. Nice. So and before that, I did some trades. So yes, the, in fact, the tank is pretty full i would say with frags i think i'm saving it so i have the bases covered like the acros the red dragons some nice acros i think i think now i'm not going to add anything else until it's unless it's some really nice choice pieces you got her back up pretty quick i like it love it yep and so one thing that makes it easy to have multiple tanks is if you already have a tank if you have you know, cycled rock, you have, you know, marine pier, your bright well, bio bricks, any of that type of stuff. It makes it really easy to start a new tank. You have all that live beneficial bacteria in there. Um, I picked up two of those bright well bricks from Reef of Palooza, New York, and I didn't have them sitting in a bucket of water. Actually, I think I showed it my Monday video. I got to remember to throw my sump. I mean, I just dumped in a bit of that first trouble start. It's been sitting in a bucket the last day or two. So I'm going to throw those in my sump and let those seed for the next few weeks. So if I set up my new frag tank soon, I'm already going to have that beneficial bacteria ready to roll to basically insta, more or less insta cycle the tank. So I have um like the bro- no, it's not bright well. You're using the bright well. I have the max spec balls. Ah. And before that, I was using the marine pure balls. And you're right; it's easy to just stick one in, and you know get something up and running. Um, that's a good point. Never thought of that either. Um, mm-hmm. The, the over t- what I do is, you know, with a tank, whenever I'm my first few fish, I usually just put them in the tank because if you get sick, I can easily mm-hmm. take them out and treat them. I don't I don't quarantine the first batch of fish. I usually try to get a bunch of fish in early and put them in. But mm-hmm. after that, I just do tank transfer to try to keep ick out. I mean, some of the other stuff I don't not that I don't try to treat for it, but I'm more worried about ick. Mm -hmm. Um, But over time, my max spec balls go away because that's what I use during the tank transfer Mm -hmm. period. And if I ever have to use copper, they don't go back in the system. Mm -hmm. They just, I just throw them out. Yeah. No, that's good. Awesome for quarantine. Rogue Aquariums, thank you very much for the 499 Super Chat. Much appreciated. Um, Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. All right. Um, So, yeah, quarantine tank. That's a great one. One of those little balls to throw it in to kind of more or less insta-cycle quarantine tank. Um, if we are talking quarantine tanks, uh, that's another tank, the little sponge filters too, that you can buy off online for a couple bucks. It doesn't hurt to have one of those, the sponges, just throw it in your sump somewhere just so it gets full of good bacteria. It's another way to kind of instantly set up and get a quarantine tank rolling in a very quick time. Uh, pure fish girl starting a nano for the young ones. 
you would be surprised how <laughs> how entertaining a nano can be. Like sometimes I find myself staring at the nano more than the big tank. I am trying to find. I think I lost this window here. I don't know what's. You lost your mute button. That's your yes, I did. It's okay. They gave up. They stopped calling. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, would love to plumb a small five to talent gang to a three hundred system to have non photosynthesis. Um, yeah, Derek, like having any tank you can plumb into a big system, especially a small one, will make it so much easier. But yeah, if I if you have it all in the same room, hundred percent connect your tanks together. Um, it's nice to have one separate tank. Does something happen? It's not going to affect that tank. But in terms of maintenance, you know, one sump. You know, plumbing all those displays into one sump just makes is one water change. It's one dosing system. You know, it's you can save a lot of money that way. So that's something to definitely consider. Uh, my carbon bag in the tank got leaked, and there's carbon all over the sand. Ah, that's a bit of a nasty one. Suck it up with water changes, vacuuming your sand bed. I think that's really your only option. I had that happen to me too, and I have to say, <laughs> I never really got rid of it. Every time I would see random. You know pieces of carbon mm -hmm. but um it did it doesn't hurt anything it's but um alone. yeah it just it's just annoying um and when you vacuum it when you try to get all of it out you tend to pull out a lot of sand but over time you'll get it out just be prepared to have to maybe add some sand back mm -hmm. so just keep sucking it out i would just take just a hose and literally just like spot suck it up wherever you see it and until you get it all i think that's really the only option to get it out persistence all right i finally have the chat open i see every, a lot of people saying hi so hey everyone <laughs> i know i uh, uh -huh. computer's all fixed back in business um, it is back in business yeah. now i have multiple windows i can see everything nice dramedy happy fourth of july four day weekend it's a four day weekend for you guys Yes, sir. It, it tomorrow is in the, it's not a four day weekend for me because my son was born on the fourth of July, so it's birthday nice. things. Yeah. Uh, but yes, Independence Day tomorrow, and I'm off Friday. And yep. All right. Well, ha happy belated Canada Day and happy early Independence Day. <laughs> what is Canada Day? Is that the first? A thing? The first. Yeah, Monday was a holiday. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, there you go. What it's is like, Canada Day? Probably the, the equivalent of Independence Day. Okay. okay. <laughs> is that why our tech team is in Toronto and Vancouver? So is that why they were out a lot of this week? Ah, holiday. Mm -hmm. mm, see, it's like an early holiday. That. Exactly. It's good. <laughs> um. So yeah, give your give your tank some extra love this weekend Sorry. if you're around. I don't know. Put uh -huh. up some American theme things. Get an American theme sticker, and I don't know. Red, Something. white, and blue coral, you know. Well, <laughs> red, red can be Fido. Yeah. Green, well, no, red can be, I don't know what red is. Green can be Fido. All right, I you give You got up. a nice red and white A-can or something. You know, it'd be good. <laughs> Derek, 199 Super Chat. Thank you, Derek. Much appreciated, buddy. Much, much appreciated. Uh, I saw a fish jump when a firework went off next to my house. Oh, crazy. I guess the vibration could start all them if it went through enough i never would have considered that before i see a lot of dogs that go crazy and fireworks go off so no keep, keep those screen tops on your tank keep your fish safe never would have considered that one okay so oh your two tanks in the background are they plumbed together or are they separate systems they are plumbed together mm -hmm. um the anemone tank is plumbed with something called the x aqua in and out overflow that mm -hmm. flows into the sump here Yep. And this, this is kind of weird, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then um, the return pump, which is the Neptune Systems Core 20, mm -hmm. has, you know, is split. I have a Y fitting that's split, and it goes here and um, goes to the big tank. So, okay. Yeah. So, two tanks, together. one sump. Mm hmm. Okay. Two Perfect. tanks, one sump, one dosing, Perfect. one everything. Th that's the biggest thing to consider, right? Like, it saves you on your protein skimmers, your dosers, your, I mean, lighting's obviously separate, but aside from that, wave makers but all your filtration is shared. And that's one of the big things that saves you money. Yes. 
um, these anemones, the reason this came about is my wife loves anemones and they kept walking around the tank and causing damage. Yes. And as you can see, these are the anemones I got from Billy Pipes and they've already split. I went to Reefa Palooza and got a good deal on some other anemones. So it's only been up a month, but I think I have 10, 12, somewhere around that number in there. Mm -hmm. And you can see that that's just a 10 gallon tank, but they look awesome like it's almost i think the rock is already covered with an mm -hmm. enemy so um yeah I, I love that tank that's a nice peaceful tank yeah it, there's something nice about enemy tanks and they're easy like stuff just flows it looks good you don't really have to worry about rtning stning it's just a nice happy tank which is and good this is beer bottom and i have to say not that i don't i love rasses mm -hmm. and i would not do beer bottom in my but in nano tanks just for ease of maintenance, bare bottom it is because this has bare bottom, and with the exception of right behind the rock, you get a little bit of like it looks like flakes or like pieces of rock, but even with the low flow for the anemones, the bare bottom stays clean. Oh, really? There's no yeah. detritus. Yeah, I love. So mm -hmm. I've even gone to a bare bottom in my son's nano tank, hmm. um, which makes it just so easy to clean, easy to maintain. Fair. Still don't know if I could do it. But what... well, in big tank i cannot because i just love rasses and i love i grew up going to the beach mm. and i love sand walking in sand to me it can't be a reef without sand so i would not do it in my main display ever mm -hmm. but for the smaller tanks yes love huh. i like it i'll if I, the, if I do a frag tank i'll do bare bottom just because it's a frag tank but still don't know if i could do it we'll see <laughs> yeah, Frag Rex work. Um, anyone ever use ceramic magnets in a tank? I have not. Um, it's likely inside of some of the equipment, but I won't use one specifically. Jeff Jerry, $10 super chat. Thank you, Jeff. Very thank kind. You, Jeff. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, ceramic magnets. Uh, if it's been on something, then I have probably used it without knowing it, but I haven't specifically bought one just for a DIY one. I've only used magnets that were enclosed or encased or something to that point. What is have a you? ceramic? I'm, I'm unfamiliar with ceramic magnets. Are those mm -hmm. the rare earth magnets? Are those, that's what they're called? Um, I believe those are different. Or, okay. Yes, yeah, ceramic are the black ones, I think. I just quickly Google it, imaged it ferrite magnets um so yeah so supposedly i think those are the ones that you can potentially use without having them sealed i i'm always weary about anything like that ideally i know some websites sell ones that are pre-coated in like plastic or acrylic um if you use something like that then you're for sure safe so i've always leaned to completely encased in epoxy or something just to not risk that rusting or potential breakdown in a tank are they stronger than regular magnets? What's the appeal of using them versus regular magnets? I believe that you don't have to worry about them being as coated as much, I think. Okay. All yeah. right. But um, rare earth is definitely stronger. And those are kind of like the nice silver shiny ones that are everywhere. Ah. Uh, okay. I see. Like, yeah, like those guys are the rare earth magnets. Just the shiny ones. Um, the can black. I see, can, I, can I see that again? It's the shiny ones. Oh, oh, yeah, like these guys are super strong. Yeah. And they suck when you pinch your finger. <laughs> uh, so, Derek, crazy thing happened this morning. Found my missing Millenaris rasp, been in the nano tank from moving, it's been two months. Holy smokes, that's a while. I've had times where I've added fish to a tank and I haven't seen them for, you know, weeks. And then one day you see them, especially rasses, because they'll just hide, sleep in the sand for quite a while until they finally feel comfortable and come out. Leopard rasses. I ended up with three. I think at one point I ended up yeah. with three in the previous tank because I added one, didn't mm -hmm. see them. Mm -hmm. Added another one, didn't see them. Added yeah. a third one and then decided to give up. And then one day I was just sitting here and my wife said, hey, you bought new fish? All three were out. Uh, but someone told me that depends on it takes a while for certain races to acclimate to your lighting and your schedule. Mm -hmm. So I think even when I added my chorus races, I, I don't know why I keep trying to point, but when I added my chorus races, they would come out in the afternoon 
until it took them a few weeks before they finally started coming out when my lights went on and then went mm. to bed. So I think some rasses are just on a different schedule. And it, but I've I've seen a ras disappear for a month. That's the yeah. longest I've. And then all of a sudden he's just there. I don't know what he was eating for a month, but he was a uh, missing yeah. for a month. And he was looking thin, but he was alive. They, they they might just be coming out at nighttime and munching. I mean, they're probably getting the odd pod as they crawl past them in the sand bed. But yeah, so a month for you. I'm going to say three weeks as long as I've went without seeing a ras. Um, yeah, if anyone has been longer, I'm kind of curious to hear that. But I have heard of people like moving a tank and there's a ras hiding in the sand bed. Also, it's like, boop, comes out, you know, they move it like a day later and there it is. Like literally tank move with like next to no water in it, which is, amazes me to be honest. But they're awesome hiders. Um, a buddy of mine, he had a hippo tang, and when he was breaking down his tank, it hitched a ride inside of a rock full of coral. So he literally be like, "What happened to my hippo tang?" And buddy bought all his corals. Like, oh, I found this in my bucket. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So even big fish can hide, which is kind of amazing to be honest. Uh. I had a similar thing happen when I bought a hippo tang off somebody, my original one. And it was in a rock. I couldn't. It wouldn't get out of the rock. It wedged itself in there. So I literally just had to leave the rock in the tank for a couple hours until it finally came out on its own. So, yeah, hippo tanks really like to hide. Mm -hmm. They're excellent hiders. Yeah, they're really good. Hmm. Just ordered tricolor fairy ras. Nice. I know that is such a beautiful yep. ras, man. I got. I um. I think I posted on the facebook group or somewhere for any guys that are in there but i bought that frag tank about a month ago maybe now it was a pretty good deal on a 60 gallon frag tank so hopefully going to be setting that up in the near future which will be kind of exciting um i posted just for fun i posted in the facebook group to see what people thought if i should do it as like a rock fire slash frags or just frags but frags won by a landslide now let me ask you something are you going to be are you getting into the coral selling game here david I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know. Um, so my tank, I have way too many corals too close together in my tank. I know eventually it's going to be trouble because they're going to start growing together. So this at least I can have somewhere to put the ones that are going to sting each other. I can frag them off and kind of grow them out and then use them for trading or whatever after that. So I don't really have a plan. Maybe for experiments, maybe for growing out stuff. I don't know. The tank so was just a really good deal. <laughs> So it, you might end up with like sort of like a Devin investigates in your. <laughs> so, you you know. never know. He never All know. Right. Reef All dudes right. investigates could could be I the know. works. I, hey, you never know. Yeah, but um, basically, long story short, I don't have the space for it now. Uh, wife and I are looking at buying the house, so that may happen soon, which is very exciting. And once I do, I will have my own office, which may incorporate a frag tank now. So I'll be good. I'm excited for it. Not not excited for a mortgage, but excited for more space to play with and. Build my little office studio room, which will be cool. A fish room, you mean? Weird. A fish room that you can work in. Yeah, it won't be that bad. All right. It would be the frag tank and then the rock flower tank, if I assume I keep all three. No, 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 that's it. That's it. It's already pushing it. Okay. <sighs> I have been there with many, many tanks, unless I could somehow automate them all. So, you know, one, they share a sump, but there are different rooms, so that's not easy to do. Or automating water changes, something to make maintenance easier on them. You know, you know what I was actually, my plan was to, with the tank in the bedroom, my kid, my son's tank, my plan was to run a dose cable in between them and sort of, instead of having like, you know, a dosing pump on that tank, just to have the dose do a water change, but have it mix in between, push and pull. I thought about that too, actually. Yeah, yeah I thought about that. I think I think I got the idea from. It's not an original idea. Mm -hmm. I think I got it from the business, and I think he's doing something similar with like um, with PMUPS, where yeah. he has the PMUPS. I'm not sure how he regulates how much it pumps, mm -hmm. um, but I know um, he's doing something similar. Um, that was my plan. I think I scrapped it. Mm -hmm. um, because then I realized that I'll need something to quarantine, something to um, throw stuff that I'm not sure about. But um, I thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I've I've literally had this exact same thought. If I could use like a dose or something to just like exchange like a gallon a day between the tanks, just to like balance out parameters and different things. But uh, Dramedy, when you added your frag system, I haven't done it yet. 
but that will be coming. Right now, my frags are just in my sump in my big tank. Um, did you add more rock or marine pure bricks to your system? So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I do have two marine pure blocks sitting in a five gallon bucket full of water change water that I'm going to add to the sump of my big tank. That way, when I set up the new tank, it's going to have a ton of pre-cycled bacteria, um, especially in a frag tank, because if you don't necessarily use rock or other stuff in it, like, you know, there might just be a couple marine pier or bright well bricks in the sump, and that might be my main kind of rock for the tank. So undecided if there's going to be rock rock in the tank or not. That's to be determined. I might throw a few pieces in there just for fish to hide in and hang out if I do. But if I do just a bunch of egg crate or do something like that, then it'd be pretty good. Is Row Aquariums in Canada? Uh, he is in Washington. It's not terribly far away. What is not terribly far? Five hours? Yeah, but probably. Seattle's about six hours, I'd say. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Robin just saying, talking about a subject I'm familiar with, multiple tank syndrome, busy with tanks every day. Yep. So I know. I, I, I was really surprised from mm -hmm. Ryan's talk and I, the percentage he gave of people who have, from their survey, how yep. many people have multiple tanks. I, I was really surprised by the number. It was 50, 60%, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's addicting how it's easy to be like, oh, yeah, one more tank, one more of these. Especially once you've upgraded equipment and you have extra stuff laying around. You're like, oh, it wouldn't take much stuff. Another tank. Someone's like, oh, I got this tank. Do you want it? Whatever. You're like, oh, sure. I'll trade your frag for it. And then you're like, oh, boom, another tank. It just happens. I, I never thought about it until he said, you know, like, X amount of people have like 50% of multiple tanks mm -hmm. and then 25% have four or more tanks. Yep. And then I started counting mine and I said, wait a second, I'm going to be in that 25% mm -hmm. once I set up this new tank. And I, it just, I guess it sneaks upon you is what I'm trying to say. You have one and then you don't realize you have another. And then before you know, there's, um, yeah, if I didn't have challenges, I think I would have been up to six by now. Mm -hmm. there, you, there you go, Robin and Clark forgot the Pico seven. Salt and one planted. So eight tanks. Ooh. Three for recan. Got three tanks. Seymour. Three going on four. Yeah. Yep. Three going on four. Um, I think, you know what I want though? I think I want all these tanks to be like interesting, a little bit different. I think I tried the circular tank, but it obviously hasn't worked out. So I'm going back to a square tank. For the little tank I'm setting up now, that's going to be the Lifeguard Aquatics tank. I think you saw that at Reefapalooza. It was at the Brightwell booth. It looks like a little, I don't know what it's called, but it had like a really flat slanted front. Oh, that's a cool one. Yeah, so that's that's the one I'm going to try. That'd be a nice rock flower tank. <laughs> You're going to have to five tanks in no time. I, do, I, I don't. <laughs> what's, the, what's the plan for number four? What's his theme or... A-cans. A-cans? Why not yeah. just put A-cans in your big tank? I don't know. Just, chat. just curious. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking, you have rock flowers that are breeding. How many rock flowers do you have? 50-ish. Jeez. And they're breeding. Well, I have three or four babies. Um, for anyone that doesn't know this, quick, quick little story. Story time. Um, on Easter Monday, so the reason I remember it, I was sitting there, I was going to go to bed, I look over, and one of the rock flowers in my big reef tank was starting to spawn. You know, he's releasing a little love juice into the water, and I'm like, wrong tank, no! So, of course, I have all the rock flowers in my nano tank. So I'm sitting with a turkey baster trying to, like, suck this up, but I have this, oh. I have, like, a gallon of milky salt water I keep running back and dumping into the nano tank, so... I, it's usually it's about six to eight weeks until you have potential babies. So I have no idea if my test tube rock flower baby experiment will work, but fingers crossed because it'd be wicked if it does. Um, so, wait, so you literally were. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is it, wait, 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 let me understand. So there is a rock flower name in your big tank <laughs> that was spawning and you collected the juice and kept dumping it in your little tank. <laughs> To get... Yes. <laughs> okay. There's like 50 rock flowers in my nano. And the one that's spawning is in the big tank with two other rock flowers. I'm like, I know. 
this needs to happen in the nano, not the big one. So yeah, I'm sitting with a tricky baser, you know, sucking up his, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then dumping into the nano. Right. Anyways, I was laughing at myself. My wife just shakes her head. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? I don't even want to know. But anyways, if it works out and I end up with a bunch of babies, then it's 100% worth it. So, But you you did, you did started seeing a few babies, though. Mm-hmm. Well, not maybe not from that spawn, but you started seeing a few babies. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. So, that's... Yeah. So there, there's three babies in there now that are, you know, they're getting bigger, other than like a little dot like they used to be. So I think there's three or four in there for sure. So it's getting there. Uh, um, how do you feed? I know. Um, what do you feed? It's target feed, or are you just broadcast? Feed? Um, I generally broadcast feed. Once in a while, I'll rough, vaguely target feed. I mean, it's still for the most part broadcast feeding, but um, yeah, usually I'll just take little part particulate food and squirt it around it every couple of days. Uh, Falcon J Dog. Hey, dude, thanks for all the great chores. You are welcome. I live in England. Just got an Apex Classic on my main display. Wondering if you have any info on how to set it up. I have three tanks. I, di- I used to do a ton of Apex Classic videos. I mean, I had a bunch back in the day, so if you dig through the archives, you'll probably find some on it. Uh, the most recent one I did was kind of how to upgrade the Classic to the newer one. But yeah, dig through some of my old videos and take a look, and if there's anything specific you want, maybe I can do something on it in the future, so... Let me know. Jeff, rock flowers are super nice. Thank you, thank you. I'm loving that little rock flower tank. I just looking top down. It's just like ah, I love all the colors and the rainbows on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, Hy- Hydra twenty six, even a couple ladies. Someone else is coming, I think. McCallum's Reef. He says I have more drive in the fall and winter mm. and spring for multiple tanks, and the summer is hard work with the family. And I think that mirrors everyone. Everyone in the hobby. Yeah, and I think that's why I get good deals towards the end of summer because yep. I think people's tanks are, you know, we, we always we always say like a lot of people don't last a year or so in the hobby. I think it's the summer months when mm-hmm. the tank gets neglected because you're doing, like for me now, that's why I, I, I think before the stream started, Dev and I were talking and I said I'm in the process of setting up auto water change. That's because kids are home. In fact, mm-hmm. they are fighting somewhere to the left. You probably can't hear them, but kids are home summer i'm taking them out vacation like the tank gets neglected a little bit so yep. i am just trying to automate uh, um you know if i change a few liters a day then it doesn't depend on me to you know when i get time to do that big water change so um i'm trying to yeah i i, rec- I think everyone goes through that i'm trying to I'm actively trying to fix it, but yeah, everyone does that. And that's why you can find deals towards the end of summer because a lot of people, you see those tank breakdown sales where you can get good deals. Yep. No, and that's and if you're looking to buy a full setup, I mean, in the summertime is your best bang for your buck, right? Because usually what happens, people neglect their tank, it's overfed, they're not getting water changes, nutrients build up, you get algae or something, they don't want to deal with it, they sell the tank. So you can get some wicked deals if you buy, usually in the middle of summer. So one good way to go. Um, now, the thing is, in order to not have this issue, is make it easy to maintain your tank. You know, have a tank, or, you know, don't have your sump or something to get through in some little spot where you can't get to it. It's a pain to do it because you're not going to do it. It's whenever you're setting up something, think to yourself, how, how can I make this easy? You know, what's going to make my life super easy? It's not going to take much effort and then you're actually going to do it. Hello, Woody. How are you? Um, you're so fish. What's going on, Woody? Uh, Devin, I bought a Red Sea Live Sand on my cycling tank. It's been a week. There are white things all over the rocks and glass and evening is as normal. That might be pods. It might be a bacteria bloom. It's hard to say without seeing a photo of that one. If you post one in the Reef Dudes Facebook group, I will take a look later. Producer Reef, what's going on? Uh, like the new Orphitech strips. I have not seen those ones yet. I have seen them. How are they? How you like they them? look. They look good. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, I am. I am. I think every time I see something, I go, "Ooh, new shiny." Not and I at all. Then I yep. close it, and I'm like, "No shiny, no new, no nothing." So, I am sticking to what I have, mm-hmm. and I am not changing my lights. And mm. I think eventually I'll set up a nano that I can experiment on. Yeah, that's good. It's good to have a but, test uh, tank. Mm-hmm. 
I think you know the Orphic. You've seen some of the BRS videos, yep. wide spectrum. So I think the tech strips is kind of their answer to like the I, I forget, I'm drawing a blank now with the other company that makes those tech strips. Mm-hmm. So I think they kind of do the same thing in the strip form factor. Okay, just kind of like add on supplemental. Is it like a supplemental blue light? It it I think it has the I think they have blue and it also has their full spectrum. Okay in the strip format okay. um, but it, lo- it looks cool and it looks very refined okay nice yeah um so yeah so drama d is saying uh supposed to compete with reef bright yeah so there's reef bright and reef breeders also makes one as well they're all kind of like those supplemental most people i see use them is pairing with t5s to add more color pop or adding that little bit of led pop to make your corals more vibrant and counteract the bit of a t5 flatness you're so fish messing. I'm probably butchering that. Thank you for the 20 sec super chat. Seek sec. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, Woody finally. My... Yes. No, <laughs> that's an inside joke with um with Woody. Oh. Um, Woody and I with the um we kind of there's you know um reef community worldwide. Woody and I we always yeah. trade equipment mm-hmm. and. It just Woody should have gotten a reactor like months and months ago, and he finally got it. So that's like an inside joke to say he finally mm-hmm. got it. Nice. Um, I was gonna some, so that's the Ultra Reef Chato reactor. Yeah, I have to say that one of the easiest to maintain nano tanks I had is when I used I built a Chato reactor on my nano tank. Yep. Um, and man, that thing it had low nutrients. I barely had to do water changes. It was quite an ugly tank because it was just a standard what we call just a Petco 10 gallon tank. And it had a bunch of stuff hanging on the side. So it was quite ugly and wasn't very photogenic, yep. but I use like one of those two little fishies reactor made a Chato reactor and it worked well. Nice. Yeah. Zero nitrate, zero phosphates. You just use a timer to turn the lights on and off, pump water through it, but it, it worked well. One word of warning. Um, I don't know if it's two little fishies, but one of the smaller, thinner reactors. I do know somebody where they're cracked from the heat of the LEDs. And they had a nice couple of gallons on their floor and had to fix a bunch of stuff. So on that, just make sure the LEDs don't get too hot. Because, um, you know, some LED strips will, you know, have 150 meters. Some will have 300 per meter type of thing or whatever the or 30 per meter, six per meter, whatever it is. Um, they have different consistencies of it. So just make sure if you go touch them, they're not super hot. Or just keep an eye out for any little hairline stress marks or anything from the light long term. Um, Interesting. I never thought of that. If it does get really hot, you can buy a little LED dimmer. You plug it in line, and you just turn it down a little bit so they don't get as much current going through it, and it'll make them a bit cooler. So. The, one, the one you built... Because um, mm-hmm. I think I ended up buying the same lights that you were using. Yep. Did those lights get hot? Mm, they weren't bad. They weren't bad. Um, but but those, I know the two little fishies or the, what's the other one? Somatic. There's a bunch of brands. The smaller ones, like some of them are thinner. I've only heard this happening once, but I have heard of it happening. So it's thrown it out there. So All just right. make sure that whatever acrylic you have is fine with the heat. I mean, it could have been maybe there wasn't water flowing through it. And I mean, because the water will help cool it down. They're, like, I don't know the exact situation. I just remember him saying that. It was a kit he bought from LFS that had lights in the reactor, a full kit. So I don't really know what combination it was exactly, but something to keep in mind. We have an interesting question there from Meldium. Mm-hmm. Uh, my glass gets much dirtier in the summer months vs. the winter months. Is the sunlight hit your tank? Um that's one question because I know if sun is hitting it, I get a bit of sunshine on mine, but it's more afternoon, the last hour of the day. And it will get a little more algae on my nano that gets the light on it. But my big tank, I haven't really noticed a difference. I, I noticed a difference mm-hmm. in the summer. Um, I think I saw another comment that kind of attributed it maybe to pollen. Mm-hmm. But but my tank does get sunlight. Yeah. Um, does get, I would say, like sustained sunlight. Mm-hmm. And I think in the summer, we just have, you know, in the winter. So in New York, in the summer, I would say we get peak summer months. We get about four extra hours of sunlight. Because yep. in the winter, by the time I'm picking up my kids from school, about 4, 4.30, it's already dark. Mm-hmm. Like the sun is already setting or down. 
while yeah. now in New York, about nine o'clock, you still have sunlight. So that's mm -hmm. an extra four hours. So it could be, it still gets, it, the tank gets the same amount of sunlight in the winter. It's just five extra hours. That's true. And I think I've heard fans say from Tidal mm -hmm. Gardens, his greenhouse, he said, it's the summer months where the sun, his corals gets so much light much is what light. actually yeah causes <laughs> issues with the greenhouse mm -hmm. um it's not that the winter where you don't get enough light is that the summer is so long yep. that it ends up causing issues so for me i think that's what um you know happens to me mm -hmm. it's just more sunlight yep um yeah that would it's more more light hours right even if it's not direct it could be just more spill light more ambulate ambient light in the room and you just open the curtains more to enjoy the summer more. So yeah. you know, in the winter, I have a window AC because it's New York. So we open the curtains, get more sunlight. And when the winter, it's cold. Mm -hmm. So you tend to keep the windows closed or the curtains pulled to keep the drafts out. So that could be one thing. Yep. Um, Crimson Arrow, what would make a good small frag tank that I can buy off the shelf? If I was to do a smaller one, what I would strongly consider is the Innovative Marine 25 Lagoon. It's around a two foot ish by fourteen or so inches deep. Um, that's a good. That's a nice size for that. You can light it with you know one AI prime or one XR fifteen or whatever you want it for lighting. Um, like one kind of pendant light should be able to do that eighteen inches or twenty inches, whatever it is. And it's a good kind of surface area to tank size. So that's something that I'd probably consider. You know what I? You know what. You brought this up. So I saw this. I was actually considering this for my son's tank. But the ones I see now, it seems to be plumbed for like a sump, like an external overflow. The one that had the sump on the back, like what Drew's Lagoon has, Drew's Lagoon on Instagram yeah. has, I can't find those anymore. They've been discontinued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the only ones they I, I would love to be able to get my hands on the older Lagoon style the ones with the sump in the back i would love because i think for my son's bedroom that would be an awesome tank yep i i really like the layout of that tank i almost got one a few times um they're definitely cool tanks and they'd be an awesome frag tank or flower tank or you know just a shallow reef uh yosef is asking do i need to dose anything if i have lps and soft corals on a nano tank i will do a 20 to 40 percent water change if you're doing that 25 to 40 percent water change weekly that's likely enough if you're doing it monthly probably not enough um zoas and soft corals don't really suck too much out of the water lps will um not nearly as much as acros but they still have that skeletal structure so they're still going to suck stuff the only way to know 100 percent for sure is really to test your tank you know test your calcium your alkalinity mainly test your alkalinity wait a week test it again if it's more than, you know, half a point, three quarter of a point drop, you know, if you test one day is nine, test in a week is eight, then that's kind of the borderline where I'd be like, okay, maybe I should start dosing. But you're not going to know for sure unless you test. If you do large water changes on a frequent basis, that's probably enough in a nano tank. So a few things to consider. Uh, I think I found one and I think I am going to get it. What are you going to get? The lagoon, I think. I'm going to measure. Is this um, tank number four? Um, yeah, it's a 25 um, all in one. Yeah. I think Marine Depot has the bundle. And I think I'm going to get it. <laughs> so MTS in the flesh live in front um, of you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I know. Yes. I would love the Lagoon. I love those Lagoon style tanks. They're They're awesome. And they make a good, and plus, you know, hey, whenever I move in a couple of years, mm -hmm. that could be my frag tank. There you go. Perfect. Hey, you're ordering for Marine Depot? All right. If you haven't used, uh, my, if you haven't used my code yet, 10% off with code Retweets. So, so wait a second. So can I stack, because can I stack coupon codes? Because it is now 10% off for the holidays. If I use the Reef Dudes codes, it's an extra 10% off. You know what? Let's try, try this live on the air right now. I don't know if you can stack, but try it. I think they All only right. let you enter one though, but maybe it's worth a try. No, no, it's already on sale. This is oh. not a coupon, Ooh. so it's already on sale. So let me see. All right, or if you can. All right, all right, all right. Discounts. Boop boop. Um, uh, Yosef, if I dose kelp water in my ATO for my nano, is that good enough? It probably will be. Kelp water, I'm gonna guess, is likely good enough for your LPS. For a nano, I think so. Yeah, that is something I did. I put it on a dosing pump mm -hmm. um, because I 
yeah, I put it on a dosing pump. I put it, made a little Voss bottle reservoir, just mixed enough mm -hmm. with a measure, use a teaspoon, shaked it up. When it settled, put it on a dosing pump. It worked fine. I ran a nano like that for almost a year and Perfect. it worked. Excellent. All right, Peter, a uh, question. I have Refugium and my Chato is not growing. I but I'm getting green hair algae growing. Uh, the Chato is still the same size when I originally bought it. Any suggestions? Okay. So if your Chato's not growing, that can generally mean that, one, you don't have enough nutrients for it to grow. Uh, B, you might just not have a good enough light, so sometimes you can get a little more intense lighting for it. Um, I've also seen lots of tanks where Chato grows really well for a few months and then it just kind of stunts its growth, and that's usually because you're out of iron or potentially i think molybdenum is another one of them but there's a few of those trace elements that help it grow and if it's absorbed all of those from your water volume then that could be why so even sometimes a bit of a water change doesn't let you stack them up no doesn't Chris is... <sighs> all right um just to add on to what you just said um you know when you when i had the trade method you could sustain um chato growth because it had when I was at Reefapalooza, Brightwell Aquatics actually has a product called Chato Growers, Algae Growers, something to that effect now, where it's like balanced additive of the stuff you just mentioned, like nice. molybdenum, iron, all the stuff that encourages, um, of course, you don't want to overdose it. I know mm -hmm. there's specific instructions, but um, yes, I am not one of the people who are going to recommend you feed more so your Chato can grow more, <laughs> because that just sounds like counterproductive a yes yes yep. that's a perfect word counterproductive but um mm -hmm. yeah i noticed that and um i think i'm gonna order some of that because i'm already at the edge where i put the ai prime it grew for like the first three weeks it filled the refugium i can't get it to grow like it's it slowed down consistently although my nutrients are low so i'm not complaining but mm -hmm. i think i might need some of that to re reinvigorate the chato yep. growth no that can definitely help but yeah m most of it if it's not growing at all i mean i would almost look at make sure you have nutrients and then look at lighting but if it's been a while then those nutrients could definitely be it because i've seen a lot of people with chato reactors it works really well for three or four months and then it kind of slows down if you don't dose iron or any of those other elements to kind of keep feeding it Hey, Lynn M, is that you, Lynn Reef Nerd? Is that you on um, on Instagram? Um, I got some nice corals from, if that is you, I think you met her at Reefapalooza. She's the one that won the MP40. Um, nice. And um, she's the one I got some a lot of the corals I have from. So if that's you, Lynn Reef Nerd, mm -hmm. Lynn M, um, how are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for the corals. Awesome. Um, Joseph is asking, what do you think of Aquaphor's probiotic reef salt? I mean, everyone in the U.S. uses red sea salt, but in Europe, almost everyone says Aquaphor's is better. Um, I have not used the Aquaphor salt, so I can't fully comment. Um, I have a buddy that uses it, and he seems to really like it. But yeah, I haven't used it, so I can't really say for sure. But honestly, whatever salt you use, regardless of the brand, try and pick something that matches your tank parameters. If you keep your elk at eight and your calcium at whatever, try and find a salt that has a similar levels. That way, if you do have an issue, you do a water change, you're not swinging your tank from a water change, right? So you want your water change to stabilize your tank and not potentially throw it off because that's something that I've seen lots of people do and never considered. The fact that, you know, I'm using elevated salt, something happens, I do a giant water change, and now my, I had a big swing in elk or something because you're used to a little tiny water change and now you do a giant one. So whatever you use, regardless of the brand, I mean... All salts are going to work. Try and keep something that matches your tank. Now, if you're not dosing your tank, then using something that elevated levels could be good because every water change, you know, it kind of bumps it back up. But if you're dosing or you have a calcium reactor, you're doing that stuff anyways, then that's really where you should try and pick something that matches whatever your dosing levels are at. So I have something to say. Um, yep. I'm not going to name the brand, but I did get my hands on, so, I know it's on some of the probiotic salt mm -hmm. and I mixed so a, a change I made so I think the last time you and I had any kind of detailed discussion about water changes mm -hmm. I think I had I used to keep my container on the fire escape pull it in I think I've, I've kept it in a closet now so I tend to mix up a big batch of water change water 
and then have it sitting there for a few weeks yep. or a week or two before mm -hmm. I use it. I think I tried, someone gave me a half a bucket of probiotic salt. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that when I mixed it up and left it for two weeks, when I opened it, it didn't smell good. So I don't know if the pro, I'm not saying the salt went bad, but I think the probiotics or all the other stuff that was added to it, mm -hmm. maybe it's not conducive to being stored without being circulated for a while. I vaguely recall someone saying that that in order to get more of the benefits of the probiotic, you actually want to use it more frequently. And it's also better to do smaller water changes with that than big ones just because of the bacteria that you're kind of activating in it. Yeah, it was more of a test. Like I got yeah. it and I was going to like try it, but um, it's not if I'm going to do that and do mix up a big batch and do auto water changes, it's not. So I'm not blaming the salt. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't fit what I am trying to do, mm -hmm. you know, with it doesn't fit what I'm trying to do now. But yeah, the probiotic salt. Um, yeah, it's not it's not something I would use. It doesn't fit what I'm trying to do now. Okay. No, fair enough. Um, so speaking of salt, mix it up, keep it on hand. I, for making your life easier, I mean, one auto water change, obviously like Holy Grail, you don't have to do them. Um, might want to vacuum the sand bed every, you know, four to six weeks. But aside from that, it makes your life super duper easy for having, mixing salt water on hand. Like right now, I think I have a 30, 35 gallon brute container. And I just have a big pump in there and I just let it fill with RODI and then I dump in a bunch of salt until it reaches the proper salinity. But now having that storage pile of water makes it really easy to do water change. So if I got to do water change, I just scoop out, you know, a five gallon bucket worth, go dump it in the tank and suck it out. It makes my life easy. So it's just making life easy to make sure you actually do these things because the pain in the butt, you're not going to do it. And then that's when your tank will slowly start to go downhill if it's neglected or not loved for a while. Yeah, and I think even if the auto water change for like doesn't make sense for me, mm -hmm. I still I think want to have it hooked up so at least you press one button and it'll change twenty four gallon twenty gallons over the course of twenty four hours or yep. something to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think either way, I think I'm going to implement this, mm -hmm. and I think I have everything I need to implement it. I am just nervous about drilling a hole through the wall. And once I get over that, um, or maybe I'm just waiting for my wife not to be here. Then she... Makes sense. Makes sense. Drywall is yeah. easy to make holes and you'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, when, once I move the tank upstairs in its future home, then I'm 100% going to do auto change. Just do like a gallon a day or whatever it is. Mix up salt every like two, month or two. Life will be good. Can't wait. I wish I, wish I could do more than a 20 gallon container inside. I mm. would love to. I would love to. This, the part that's going to make it more expensive is I want to steal the spot where like the wash and dryer is. So I'll have to like get a stacker one. Then I can steal that little column and then I'll have to find some kind of a square bin or something to fit in there. But I don't know. Uh, Future uh, projects. Uh, but that's going to be the dream, man. Automated. No more hauling water or anything. Oh. The, my tank, you can see, is close to a window. Mm -hmm. There is. This is the back of my building. And yep. there is a drain right outside. So if you aim properly, when I put the hose through the window, if I aim properly, <laughs> it's going right in the drain. So whoop, whoop. Nice. I uh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can, why not? It's perfect. Hey. hey. It's... Exactly. Yep, nobody goes back there anyway, so no one will see it. Yeah, so that's the way to go. Okay, so moral of the story is, if you're addicted in this hobby, you will end up with more than one tank. If you have more than one tank, find ways to make your life easy. Like either connect them or find ways to streamline your water changes, your maintenance, you know, or potentially if you can share a refugium or something, then you don't need to, you only need to worry about one skimmer, you know, one refugium light, one doser, one, well, it could be one or multiple return pumps, depending how you have it wired up, but it could just be a manifold that feeds other tanks, right? So there's lots of ways to make your life easy. And that's kind of, I think, key to keeping your tank thriving and happy long term is make it easy. Right. Right. I just had a thought, Devin. Yes. I don't have a good answer. What, now that you have multiple tanks, what do you do when you're going on vacation? Mm. Because you're asking someone now to babysit multiple tanks. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with that? So I guess I technically have three tanks. You count the jellyfish tank. Um, I only get them to feed them. My... 25 gallon nano has like a five gallon water change jug on it so that could last close to a month so that's not an issue 
Um, if I'm going away for a week or less, then my 15-gallon, 14, 15-gallon auto top-off bin is fine for my big tank. If I'm going away for longer, like two weeks, then I'll pull one of the little brute trash cans out, and I'll fill that up and use that for my ATO bin while I'm gone. So ATO is my biggest concern. I technically have an auto feeder on the tank. I just like to feed Nori and Frozen at night. But for the most part, everything else is pretty automated there. All right. You, yep. very similar. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons I have a, I think, if you see right here, that is my ATO container that's three feet tall. And that's one of the reasons I got that size because when I'm traveling for a week at a time, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I want to make sure I have enough water. And that's one of the reasons I have a chiller because when you're using a fan to cool the tank in the summer, evaporation, and you can really go through. I mean, when you're coming away from a week, long business trip i don't think when you get back in one of the mm -hmm. first things you want to think about is let me refill all these ato containers mm -hmm. uh, but a few I, I don't remember if it was a live stream or an in-person conversation with jake adams or a video but i remember talking to him i think it was an in-person con in-person conversation at reefa palooza last year where he said when he's going away on vacation he just feeds his tank he feeds his fish leading up to it yep. and make sure they're fat and then he'll, he'll leave them for a week at a time. And when he comes back, he just feeds them heavy again. He doesn't worry about them in between. And I've started to sort of follow that. I have a, see, I have an auto feeder on my big tank here. Mm -hmm. It's zip tied to my lights. Nice. But, you know, they get food when I'm not here, like once every couple of days. But the mm -hmm. other tanks, they don't get fed. And the last couple of vacations, last year and this year, I haven't lost any fish or every, everything turned out fine. A week, five, six days. Yeah, I just so starting the week before, I'll just feed them three, four times a day, fatten them up. Yep. I mean, they, then, they'll be fine a few days. I mean, long term, realistically, like my my fish should be fine on just the auto feeder, but they're spoiled. Yes. Very spoiled. So they get lots of food. But making sure you have a big ATO reservoir, biggest thing. Um, someone else said it a minute ago, too, is don't, yeah, Salty Lou, don't change anything. If you're going on vacation, don't do it. Leave, don't do anything new keep your tank status quo don't add anything to it and yeah because if you're not around to see if something happens or goes wrong with your new addition that could be trouble right so don't other than you know maybe top off everything and do a water change for you leave don't add any new equipment and don't do any big changes i think you're making fun of me because i think of the few times i've had tank crash mm -hmm. when i'm not home is because i changed something i think I think a couple of years ago when I was on vacation in, in Atlantic City, mm -hmm. I think I changed the return. I was leaving to go to Atlantic City 11 o'clock in the morning, yeah. and six, 11 a.m. And 6 a.m. I was in Home Depot buying plumbing for a new return home. Mm -hmm. So obviously that didn't turn out well. And there was another time where, I, you know, the stuff arrives mm -hmm. and you're it's sitting there and you're looking at the box and you're, um, you know, you're tempted and then the night before vacation you sit there you're all packed you're nervous you're like i have nothing to do let me hook up this brand new return pump that i've never used before mm -hmm. and didn't turn out well for me yeah so. um yeah i'm traveling soon and i have a bunch of stuff that i want to install and i think i'm gonna wait mm -hmm. um until i get back before i you know new dosing pump new stuff like yeah. that I had um, one of my trips when I had got the Nio skimmer, same thing. I was like itching it and box and put it back on. I'm like, nope, wait till I get back in town. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely wait. Always wait. Do a big water change, then nothing else. That's it. Let's top off stuff. But hands down, the biggest thing for most people is make sure you have enough, a big enough ATO reservoir to cover your tank. And if you're using a new container that you don't normally use, it's going to be bigger, it's likely taller. Make sure that you don't have any issues of it siphoning out. Because I've also seen that happen. When we went away for our wedding last year, one of my buddies had a big brute trash can on his, but he didn't have a siphon break on his. Uh, so a buddy went to go look after his tank and came over, and it was literally like one mil from the top of his sump from overflowing. And it's wow. be because his old one was the same height as the sump or lower. So it never, that never happened. But now he had this big one. It basically leveled the sump is millimeters. Like he sent us a photo and we're like, did it spill? It's like nothing. So make sure you have a siphon break. That's not a big one. I see someone in the comment to saying, Hey, Facebook is back up. Yeah. And, yeah. So social media has yeah. been broken today. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. Anything owned by Facebook specifically was not working. And that's Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Yep. All Facebook properties. So, How about yeah. You? Yeah, it's working. I know. I tried to post off my, my daily photo to Instagram. It took me like two hours. I didn't retry every like half an hour. It's like, ah, eventually worked. I thought, I thought buggered was a curse word in Canada. Buggered? Nah. <laughs> okay. All it's all right. good. It's all good. Uh -huh. All right. All <laughs> awesome. Right. Well, I think we are hitting somewhere around that hour mark and got places I got to be soon. So I'm going to cut her off for today. I know. I know. I said I'll keep it shortish. Oh, man. I know. I'm trying to stick to an hour for summer. Uh, Lots is going on. Hey, shorter live streams better than no live stream. I know. I know. <laughs> I think so. All right, guys. Sorry. Uh, so Mel Melidium, oh, how's your tank doing since the crash? Anything new? What have you changed? What's new? What's um, changed? Um, I took the T5s off. I'm only doing LEDs now. Yep. Um, Radeons, um, took the Kalkwasser off. That's what crashed the tank, so I'm a little gun shy there. Mm -hmm. Um, calcium reactor going calcium reactor now. Pretty much everything else is the same. I, those are the big changes that I've made. Um, I threw everything out and I re escaped. I did everything. Actually, um, you know what, Devin? When yep. this video, when this live stream ends, I'm going to go finish editing a video about yes. maybe the cycle process. Um, and then my next video will be like an update on where the tank is now. But um, everything looks good, man. I'm happy it's been up for a couple months now and everything is flourishing. Got some corals. Got a lot of corals and fish from Riva Palooza and love how the tank's going. Yes. No complaints. Excellent, excellent. I love to hear it, and I like the motivation of editing videos. Uh, right. Adam, do a video on the Naya Skimmer. Good in-depth videos out there. Knowing good depth. All right, I shall do one soon. I'm actually way overdue because I've been using it for probably six months now. I was going to wait a couple months before I did a video just to get, you know, make sure everything's all good. I like, I'll do an unboxing, but then I like to use it for, you know, a couple months before I do a video on it just to make sure... You know, it's still good. It's not just like, oh, it's pretty and then something broke. But yeah, so far, I definitely love the Naya Skimmer. It is smaller than my big one that I used to have. The Coral Box Hall 9 was bigger, but I feel like it's it probably skims better and it's a much smaller package. But I will do a video on that one soon because right. I'm overdue. Uh, do, 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 do. Are you guys stop feeding Norries to your tanks just to let them graze on the tank? No, I have no LG in my tank. They get Nori every single day. Every uh, day? Every day. Okay. Do like Don't every couple days. Okay, every day. Um, I buy it from the sushi store. It's like the sushi size sheet, so like a half sheet type of deal. And I put one of those in my tank every single day. They get some a small morsel of pellets in the afternoon. And they get frozen or reef nutrition stuff or some kind of good stuff at night. But my fish are spoiled. It's true. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I think we're gonna call it for today. Thank you guys for joining. Reefing with O, thank you for coming on. Get that video edited out there for the people. I will. Tr I will try. Yep. I'll get started on it ASAP. Excellent. Now, if um, you guys enjoyed it, as always, hit that thumbs up button. If you got any questions that we didn't get to, you can always ask them in the comments for later on. And yeah, hit that thumbs up button. Derek, Jeff, and do 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 do, and Rogue Aquariums. Thank you guys for the super chat. Much appreciated. And we will see you guys Monday's video or next week's live stream. All right. Thanks, guys.